Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. So you're wondering what NFTs are. Well, that's what we're talking about today on Things You Should Know. So stick around. The Things You Should Know podcast is our pleasure to welcome you each and every week. Some of the topics that we discuss on this podcast range from tech to innovation, health and wellness to, yes, unsolved mysteries and crimes. You picked a great day to join us. We've got a great podcast ahead for you. Sit back, relax, listen, and enjoy. Thank you for joining us at Things You Should Know podcast. Hey, you. Yes, you. You're listening to Things You Should Know podcast. You like it? You like to hear more? Well, great. Would you like to know two different ways that you can support the podcast? All you got to do is when you're done listening to this podcast, go down into the notes, the show notes. There are two links there. Either one. Check them out. Thanks again. Have a great day. Hey guys, welcome to Things You Should Know Podcast. My name is Kelly. I'm your host. And yeah, I don't know what NFTs are either, or I didn't. Did some research, going to bring it to you. So stick around. It should be a learning experience for all of us. It's my pleasure as always welcoming you into the podcast. Got a great podcast set up for you today. And this can be the starting point of uh, learning new information, which is always exciting. And then also, how can it benefit us? This is what we do here at the podcast, finding out something we do not know. And then the premise is we're going to be empowered and then figure out how this can benefit or better our quality of life. Many of you have heard NFTs over the last few months, be it on the news or on social media. And perhaps you, like I, wondering, what are they and what do they do? How much do they cost? And what is the purpose of these things? We're going to see how deep we can get into this today. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, uh, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. We're in season two. So that means you're a whole season behind. We'd love for you to uh, subscribe to the channel today and lock us in so you don't forget where we are, who we are. Whatever platform you're listening to us on, we're on all Uh, platforms. So uh, welcome to Things You Should Know podcast. Go ahead and subscribe now. Guys that have been supporting the podcast since season one, since day one. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Listen, I can't say enough uh, about folks who are already subscribed to our paid platform, folks who continue to come back week after week and even day after day and listen and download uh, our podcast. It is humbling. It is certainly something that uh, we're grateful for and we continue to say thank you. 
Only one ask. This is always the call to action. Newcomers and uh, old timers alike. If you please would uh, share, share our podcast with one person that, you know, it can be your family, your friend, associate, uh, you know, coworker. Doesn't really matter. Certainly uh, by now you have identified a favorite genre, a favorite podcast that you like, and even one that you feel could benefit uh, one of your friends or loved ones, associates. Please share. That's our primary source of marketing at this point. It's been all word of mouth and we're growing and continuing to grow. And we are we're very proud of that, that we're growing organically and you guys are part of the process. Now, of course, as always, you have an opportunity to take your experience to a higher level, which is the paid platform level. All that information is in the show notes, and uh, I'd love for you to be able to uh, participate there as well. We're really going to take that to the higher level as well. So all that being said, let's just kind of jump into the content for today. We've got a few articles, but two in particular that I'm going to talk about today One comes from The Verge, theverge.com. It is NFTs Explained. And then the other comes from our buddies over at businessinsider.com. You've heard of both of these. These are uh, very savvy and very uh, knowledgeable folks in the financial and technical sectors, The Verge and also Business Insider. And they're going to share with us uh, what we need to know about non-fungible tokens. That is what NFT stands for. So that's your first lesson of the day. NFT stand for non-fungible tokens. So uh, Google says, as it relates to non-fungible tokens, when asked what exactly are they, what exactly is an NFT? Well, non-fungible tokens are interchangeable digital assets. They're traded over the Internet. NFTs are generated and traded in cryptocurrency, which, of course, is digital cash with an encrypted key, often in the form of a random string of numbers. So that's our working definition, if you will. I'm going to jump over here to an article from uh, Business Insider. And let's start off and let's see what they say, what their definition is. What is an NFT? Well, again, NFT stands for non-fungible token. The spelling is N-O-N-F-U-N-G-I-B-L-E, non-fungible token. At a basic level, an NFT is a digital asset that links ownership to unique physical or digital items such as works of art, real estate, music, or even videos. NFTs can be considered modern day collectibles. Okay, so that's one way to think about it. NFTs can be considered modern day collectibles. Everything, but in the digital space though, right? In the digital space, because these are bought and sold online and they represent a digital proof of ownership. Okay, NFTs represent a digital proof of ownership of any given item. So NFTs are securely recorded on what's called a blockchain. Okay, you have to go back when we started talking about cryptos, you know, back in earlier days on the podcast, so you can get a good running definition of blockchain. The same technology that is behind cryptocurrencies is called blockchain, which ensures that the asset is a one of a kind asset. Now, the technology can also uh, make it difficult to alter or to counterfeit NFTs. That's the that's the whole purpose of the blockchain. Now, let's break this down a little bit uh, to really get a handle on what NFTs are and to make it helpful and familiar and help us to understand a little bit better. OK, we know what NFT stands for. We've got a good def- working definition going on. Uh, and, and And let's just build on that. All right, so to really get a handle on NFTs, it's helpful to get familiar with the economic concept of fungibility. So fungible items can be exchanged with one another with ease because their value isn't tied to their uniqueness. Example, you can exchange a $1 bill for another $1 bill and you will still have $1, even though your new bill has a different serial number. Okay. 
Now, non-fungible items are interchangeable. With NFTs, each token has unique properties and isn't worth the same amount as other tokens. You know, $2 versus $1 or $5 bill versus $1 bill. So the question is, why are people shelling out so much for these NFTs? By creating an NFT, creators are able to uh, verify scarcity and authenticity to just about anything digital. This is according to Solo Cisse, a co-founder and uh, chief operating officer of Calisy. They say to compare it to traditional art collecting, there are endless copies of the Mona Lisa in circulation, but there's only one original. NFT technology helps assign the ownership of that original piece. Now, selling NFTs has been a lucrative business in the art world. And here are some examples. First, digital artist uh, Beeple sold every day, the first 5,000 days for $69.3 million, million dollars through a Christie's auction. Second example, a 20 second video clip of LeBron James entitled Cosmic Dump Number 29 was sold for $208,000. Uh, thirdly, a crypto punk NFT sold for one point eight million. Hmm. And then lastly, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey auctions an NFT of his first tweet. Guess how much it sold for? Two point nine million dollars. All right. This is getting crazier. So how do NFTs work? Well, many NFTs are created and they are stored on the uh, Ethereum network. And Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. Ethereum. Ethereum. I'm not sure which one it is. I will go with Ethereum network. Although other blockchains such as Flow and Tezos also support NFTs. So based on that statement, not all blockchains or not all cryptos support NFT because they're specifying certain ones. So how does it work? Uh, because anyone can review the blockchain, the NFT ownership can easily be verified and traced while the person or entity that owns the token can remain uh, pseudo anonymous. So they know who it belongs to, but they don't necessarily have to identify themselves. OK, now different types of digital goods can be what they refer to as tokenized such as artwork, items in a game, or stills or video from a live broadcast, like we talked about the NBA LeBron James deal. Now, while the NFT that uh, conveys ownership is added to the blockchain, the file size of the digital item doesn't matter because it remains separate from the blockchain. So the blockchain records the ownership, you know, who owns the token, for example, uh, that's separate from the file size and where it could be stored, Okay. Now, depending on the NFT, the copyright or the licensing rights might not come with the purchase, but that's not necessarily the case. Similar to how buying a limited edition print doesn't necessarily grant you exclusive rights to that particular image. As the underlying technology and concepts begin to advance and get more advanced, NFTs could have many potential applications that go further beyond the art world. Because right now it seems like that's kind of all that in that genre is kind of where where this technology lies. For example, what can happen in the future? Well, a school could issue an NFT to a student who has earned a degree and let employers easily verify an applications. Or I'm sorry, an applicant's education. That's a that's a pretty straightforward example. I understand that. So, in the future, let's say for example, um, uh, Boeing is trying to verify Susan Carter's. Education. She's an MIT graduate and she has a certain concentration in aerospace engineering. Well, if they being the school, in this case, MIT, was to issue an NFT to their students, Boeing could simply verify that, verify the students uh, education through the NFT. OK, that seems fair. That seems straightforward or a venue, a venue could use NFTs to sell and attract event tickets. NFTs could be used to sell and attract events, uh, event tickets, potentially cutting down on resale fraud and our, you know, street brokers, if you will. Now, 
A big question comes up. What's the difference between NFTs and cryptocurrency? Are they the same? Are they different? How are they related? Well, NFTs and cryptocurrencies rely on the same type of technology. You keep hearing me saying blockchain, the blockchain technology. NFT marketplaces may also require people to purchase NFTs using a cryptocurrency. However, cryptocurrencies and NFTs are created and used for two very different purposes. Cryptocurrencies aim to act as a currency, okay, as a currency by either storing value or letting you buy or sell goods. Cryptocurrency tokens are what's called fungible tokens, similar to flat currencies like a dollar. NFTs, however, create one of a kind tokens that can show ownership and convey rights of digital products. Okay, so again, cryptocurrencies are digital currencies. You can use cryptocurrency. Let's say, for example, if you went to the Apple store and Apple took if, uh, Ethereum cryptocurrency and you want to buy a new MacBook Pro that just came out the other day. Well, you could use that digital currency transferred to Apple and you could purchase that product. OK, it's just like uh, uh, giving them your debit card or credit card, except now you're using cryptocurrency. Well, an NFT just as an example, I'm not saying they do this now. An NFT in this case, instead of using it to buy the laptop, let's say your laptop was stolen or lost. Well, when found, if an NFT was assigned to that laptop to show ownership and convey rights, then you would be able to validate the, the ownership of that particular product. Does that make sense? All right. It's, it's getting clearer and clearer, clear as mud. Now, how to buy an NFT? You can buy, sell, trade, and create NFTs from online exchanges or from their marketplaces. The creator or the current owner may choose a specific price, or they could auction, and you have to bid on the NFT. So how does this work? First, there's a foundation. What's the foundation? A community-curated marketplace that requires creators to be invited by other creators who are already part of that platform. That's foundation. The other way is Nifty Gateway, N-I-F-T-Y. This is an art-based focused marketplace that works with big name brands, athletes, and creators. Okay, so that seems a little exclusive to me, but all right, let's keep moving. OpenSea. This is one of the first and the largest marketplaces where you can find NFTs for a wide range of collectibles. So far, all of this is still in the art genre. Next is Rarible, R-A-R-I-B-L-E. It offers a range of NFTs with an emphasis, yes, on art and its own R-A-R-I token. Has its own token. Rarible has its own token. And then lastly, Super Rare, just the way it sounds, Super Rare, a marketplace that focuses on curating and offering digital art. All right, so let's summarize this uh, NFT piece. We've learned a little bit. Some of you still may not be totally in focus. It's a little bit more focus for me. I don't think I could go out today and buy anything, but I understand a little better versus before we started. What's the bottom line? Well, while there are many, many practical applications for NFTs in the future, they're primarily used right now for art, digital art at that. So for creators, NFTs create a seamless way to select digital art that might not have much of a market otherwise. Additionally, there are ways in which creators can get paid fees for each subsequent sale of that particular art. This, again, is according to our friend Cissé. On the flip side, according to uh, them, Collectors are able to speculate on digital art as well as have bragging rights on rare collectibles on their particular chain, things that they own. So, for example, if you're considering purchasing an NFT as an investment, know that there's no guarantee it will increase in value. While some NFTs sell for thousands or even millions of dollars, others may remain or even become worthless. So this is the the dilemma or the challenge or the reality 
of digital currencies as well as digital product ownership. Uh, we're not in a space yet where, where this is a done deal and everybody's accepting digital currencies and cryptocurrencies are, you know, not yet a standard thing. I think we're getting there and NFTs uh, could be another part of getting there. Uh, but really, I just wanted to um, just bring this to you guys today because I know thousands, if not millions of you guys are searching Google to say, what is an NFT? Because it's confusing. Most of us are not in the art space, so we're not as maybe tuned in to, to the use of this NFT so far. Uh, I can see some examples of some different things that it can be used for in the future. But for now, it seems like it's in the art space. This is what we do here on the channel. We want to bring you some information that previously you didn't know. Uh, if you are an art dealer and you want to follow up on that, we're going to put the articles on our Facebook page and our Facebook group. Feel free to do as you please. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I trust and hope that you did learn something. It's always my pleasure to bring to you uh, information that previously you didn't know with the hopes that it will empower you. Why? Because we want you to make better decisions because better decisions lead to better qualities of life. It's been my pleasure to be with you today. Come back and check us out again here at Things You Should Know. Have a good one. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.